Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening for our virtual subject evening. This is the first in the series of, uh, of sessions that we're running across this evening and tomorrow night. Um, at this session, we are going to be talking about art and design, photography, graphic communication and extended project qualifications. There's quite a bit we're going to be covering this evening. My name is Amy Smith and I'm the marketing manager at Lower Soft Sixth Form College. As we go through the presentation, please feel free to pop any questions you've got in the Q&A box down the bottom. You can type them in, them in as we go along and then when we get to the end of the presentation, we will answer some of those for you. So um, let me hand over to our tutor, Chris, who's going to take you through our subject this evening. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the Art, um, Graphics and Photography event. Um, I'm going to talk to you about um, art and design in general, uh, which will cover art, photography and graphics. And then I'll uh, show you some examples of some artwork to uh, get you to see what kind of things that uh, students that we currently have here have produced um, already and options that you could produce yourself. And then I'll talk a little bit about the EPQ. Um, so I'm just going to start by reading a little kind of script that I've got um, that explains about how art and design and the art and design department works at the sixth form. So the art and design department at the sixth form is more than just an area in which uh, to study. The four specialist art studios uh, form a creative hub and students are encouraged to use, um, use them freely in order to learn and explore ideas and personal interests. The specialist art subjects um, we deliver at the sixth form are art and design, graphic communication and photography. Quite a lot of our students choose a combination of those subjects along with other A-level subjects. Some students might be interested in doing all three of those subjects which would form a full-time uh, timetable at the sixth form. The way in which the courses are delivered at the sixth form is in the style of a kind of, uh, these art courses in the style of a university kind of study. So we encourage independence and individuality from the outset. Students are provided with dedicated art classrooms um, accessed only by art students, uh, photography and graphic students. Many students in year 13 also then get their own dedicated studio space, um, which is a space that they can access at any time during the course. They can make it their own. It's like a kind of a little uh, hub where they can go to if they kind of want a quiet space to work. And that's that's something that only the art students, art, graphics, design um, and photography students will have an option to have. So that's quite a nice thing to have as part of the arts A-level. Um, also, um, in, uh, students are provided with um, art equipment. Um, obviously, there's an expectation that you might have your own, a uh, certain amount of your own, but we do have our own supplies, um, materials that you are more than welcome to kind of use and um, create anything that you want really. Uh, in the autumn term of year 12, art teachers work with students through a skills-based kind of foundation term, uh, which explores a broad range of artistic approaches. So whether you're doing art, and photo uh, art photography or graphics, uh, you'll all get different approaches. You'll get some photography work, you'll get some art work, um, painting, drawing, you'll also do some graphics. And then uh, after this point, uh, students are encouraged to specialise in their particular approach. So within their specialist subject and begin their personal investigation into that approach. This is the main difference between a kind of GCSE course where students, because uh, at the sixth form, students begin like a year long exploration um, within their own fields. So within their own specialist subjects, so photography, graphics or art, and also kind of geared up for your own interests. Um, each student may follow a different path and study a different creative genre supported by their teachers through the tutorials, uh, which is often one to one guidance um, and also workshops. A study of the arts is a study of visual literacy and aesthetics of the world around us. This becomes increasingly more important uh, in today's increasingly visual world where everything from politics to healthcare is kind of driven by having a visual literacy. Um, as well as becoming highly skilled and knowledgeable arts practitioners, art students are highly respected by universities um, because their wider skills gained through independent nature of these art courses are really valued. So independent research, ind independent um, 
exploration of ideas. Universities are really interested in students who have got their own voice and art and design, graphic communication and photography are three A-levels where you can really build that and kind of learn about yourself and what you want to say about the world. Um, Lower South Sixth Form College has the facilities and the sites to be able to offer art students a huge array of resources. And in more certain times, the art department has offered residential trips, most recently Paris, Amsterdam and Berlin, as well as day trips to London and other local galleries such as Cambridge and Norwich. It is preferable that students wishing to study A-level art, photography and graphics have achieved uh, about a, gr a grade five at GCSE within a kind of creative course, so art, photography or graphics or a, another design based course like product design or textiles. Um, however, consideration will be given to any student um, who wishes to apply based on a portfolio of work that they might um, bring to enrolment. Many of our A-level students go on to study in a creative field at degree level. Last year, almost two thirds of our A-level art students began a, a course in a creative degree um, in fields diverse such as architecture, illustration, um, marketing, interactive design, graphics and creative computing. Uh, UK is world renowned for arts and uh, our arts and our arts industry. Creative careers are the fastest growing economic sector in the UK. Um, and doing an arts based A level such as art, graphics or photography will equip you not only the skills and attributes to become part of this sector in employment, but also it will give you an outstanding portfolio in which you could apply for some of the UK's most recognised and celebrated art universities. When I was in year 11 um, and thinking about the choices of subjects to study at sixth form, I chose art, graphics and photography uh, myself and it wasn't an easy choice. Um, I felt like actually some of my other subjects I was stronger in in terms of my GCSE results. But um, I, I wanted to study a subject that already that I did I wanted to study a subject that I that wasn't already kind of understood so where the information is given to you and then you've got to remember it um, in like an exam I wanted to explore and discover a world that was personal and interesting to me where there weren't there were very few rights and wrongs um, in terms of outcomes so it's a very subjective um, subject area um, and as art, photography and graphic students at L6FC, um, this is what we'll teach you and, and what you will learn, kind of how to explore your own ideas and your own visions. So that's kind of like my speech uh, over with. Um, so now I'm just going to kind of run through the three separate um, art endorsed specialised A levels. So the first one is art and design. Um, and much of obviously what I've been through there is just kind of giving you an insight into art at the sixth form already. But these slides kind of show you some of the skills that you'll be uh, learning. So, for example, in art, um, drawing, painting, printing, sculpture, craft, collage, mixed media, photography. There's more than that list that's on there, but that's kind of just to show you how open it is. And the progression routes from art and design, uh, obviously, you can... You can study one of them. So for example, if you studied art and design at A-level, it doesn't mean you can only then go on to university to study art. You could actually go on to study photography or any of those subjects which are written down there. So fine art, fashion textiles, graphic design. It doesn't, art, art and design courses are not designed to just be within themselves. They can be adapted to other art disciplines. Um, so the next couple of slides are just some um, examples of artworks that have been made at the sixth form. Um, and the one thing to know here is that these artworks that you see, they're not the only things that you can make, but they're just good examples of a range of different styles and um, techniques you can use. So a lot of our students, they do painting and drawing um, and they're obviously quite skilled um, and they've come from kind of a fine art background. But because we do art, craft and design, it's open to other things. So, for example, in the, the sketchbook as a kind of a standard place to work is a really useful tool um, and you can kind of create your ideas and obviously kind of write them down and document them in the sketchbooks. Um, and these are just some examples of some sketchbook pages which have kind of very, been very successful projects. 
The next um, A-level is photography. So very much like art and design, you'll start with beginning off uh, looking at uh, contemporary practice in photography and also historical practice. So we'd be looking at kind of digital photography, but also learning about the origins of photography. So film photography, we've got a little dark room here at the sixth form. We don't use photography as just like taking a photo, putting an SD card in a, in a Mac computer or a PC and then playing with it on Photoshop. Photography is much more interesting than that. We make, for example, cameras out of Pringles tubes. Um, we have done things where we have completely blackened out one of our classrooms, cut a hole in, let the light flood through and the outside world has kind of come flooding in onto the walls like a camera obscura. Um, so there's a lot more to photography than perhaps what you, what you think it is. So it's a really good A-level to be studying where you can learn about the history of photography, but also embracing kind of your iPhone or your Samsung or your digital camera. Um, again, like the uh, other art subjects, if you study photography at A-level, it doesn't mean that you would naturally just go on potentially to do photography as a degree. Um, you could do illustration, 3D design, graphic design. Um, you'll obviously get skills based around how to use Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. So it will open up a world of lots of different art disciplines that you could go on um, to in, in, in a university course. Here are some examples of some art, uh, sorry, some photography work. Um, so a lot of students, they use the studio lighting that we have here to create these really colorful um, or interesting kind of portraits. Portraiture isn't the only thing that you can obviously um, study. This slide here shows you how photography doesn't have to just be something that is a digital form that has to stay digital. These are all examples of photographs that have been used um, in a 3D kind of based uh, way. Um, so kind of collage, um, painting on top of photographs, having a kind of a three dimensional kind of foreground, midground, background. Um, so the photography doesn't have to stay on the screen basically. And then this slide here is just some examples of some film photography. So um, you'll see a beach scene there, which is shot by one of our A-level students who is currently in year 13, who does most of his work is done with a drone. Uh, he flies it out at like sunset and sunrise and takes these beautiful photographs of landscapes. Um, some of these other photographs are photographs that have been taken with film cameras that have even been developed in our darkroom or developed somewhere else and then fed in digitally and, and edited that way. So there's lots of different photographic techniques that you would study during A-level photography. And then the last course um, to talk about is graphic communication. Graphic communication is art and design. Um, it's not often such studied at GCSE at high school, but the difference between A-level art and A-level graphic communication, it's graphic communication is like art for purpose. So for example, if you're interested in marketing or media or um, packaging or getting into an industry where you are designing something for everyday use, whether it's products you see in the shop or building design um, or even things like kind of marketing and social media, um, graphic communication is an excellent course to, to choose um, and is actually probably more accessible for more people who are interested in art than actually art and design. There's less impetus on accurate drawings and uh, painting. This is more uh, mechanical, so you can use rulers, you can use um, tools which can aid drawing, which can often be a kind of a shortcut to a, a good grade. So the kind of things you'd study at graphics is things like illustration, advertising, layout design, packaging, um, editorials, so things like kind of making zines or magazine front covers or newspaper kind of articles, signage that you might see out on billboards or bus stops, um, and we do a lot of photography and feed that in. Again, the kind of courses that you uh, can study, graphics probably out of all three of them is the one real world subject where the skills you would learn would be an excellent kind of portfolio in a world which is becoming very much like a work from home kind of environment. Graphic communication is one of the 
of the three courses the one that really would suit that kind of environment because a, a lot of it is kind of using the computer to generate uh, artworks and outcomes and there is a list of and that's not an exhaustive list of all the different courses you could study at university here's some examples of some graphic communication artwork because not everybody knows kind of what it might look like so this slide shows um, examples of posters that have been made by current students uh, or students that have just left this year and um, one thing to say about our graphics communication course is that um, in the last year nobody uh, got a grade less than a b actually we had 100 uh, percent b to a star grades in graphic communication um, and these are some examples of some posters that were made for different students interests um, the next slide is a, a project done by one student but just to show you kind of what the project can be. So on the left, you've got some um, kind of phone um, designs for how uh, a concept um, company called Growth um, would, be, would look on a kind of an Instagram post. Also, you've got kind of poster design as well for a growth festival, which this student was really interested in kind of making a concept festival and also some wristbands at the top there and on the right, the poster kind of put in a space surrounded by plants because the Grow Festival was kind of a concept botanic uh, Kew Gardens kind of festival. And then the last slide is just some other examples of graphic communication. So I mentioned about being able to make uh, magazines or homemade zines. So on the right there's some pages of a student's work where they have printed out their own zine about feminism. In the middle there is uh, the orange kind of square is actually a student's redesign of a pre-existing website, uh, a gaming website called Steam and he's redesigned how it looks um, and this is all done in Photoshop and Illustrator and obviously they were taught the skills on how to use that. Also you've got um, logo design down the bottom there where somebody has drawn these logos and then would input them into digital and work with it and also on the right kind of stencil screen printing um, is also part of uh, graphic communication. So that's the arts kind of dealt with. Uh, I'm also the EPQ coordinator and uh, the EPQ uh, is a project that you can take alongside your other A-levels or BTECs. It's the equivalent of an AS level qualification um, and it, it kind of stands alone. And the really nice thing about the EPQ is, well, there's a few nice things about it. The first thing is that universities are extremely supportive of the EPQ. Um, because it fosters essential skills required for successful university career, so such as independent study skills, um, researching and essay writing, um, and it also gives you a lot of ownership and enjoyment um, over your own learning. Some universities even lower their grades and their entry requirements if you've passed an EPQ, and the EPQ is ran in year 12 um, uh, for the whole year. Um, gives students the opportunity to complete a research-based project outside of their other study uh, areas of study. And it can literally be on any topic or any um, theme or interest that you have. It, it, it varies massively on what you could do with the EPQ. Um, on the EPQ, you would design, identify, plan, and complete a project while applying a range of organizational skills and strategies to meet objectives. Um, it's, it's one hour taught lessons a week, uh, so it means that it's, there's very little kind of course, the, the course is more student led than it is teacher led, you get taught skills and then you're asked to go away and apply them in your own time. Um, you'll need to meet deadlines, you'll be planning and managing a project, you'll take decisions, you'll solve problems. Um, and you'll also learn things like presentation skills and communication skills. Most EPQs take the form of a written essay, but you can uh, make a production, you can manufacture an artifact, you can do a scientific investigation, um, or you can even do some kind of form of production or show or play. Um, and intrinsic to the EPQ is you keep a kind of a detailed log of the entire process from beginning to end as well as a reflection and then you'll do like a presentation of your findings at the end. It's a brilliant course if we don't offer um, a specific subject that you're really interested in. So for example astronomy, if you're really interested in that 
um, but we don't do it here as an A-level project, you could study that as your EPQ, just for, as, a, as an example. And that's, that's it, that's uh, the arts and the EPQ covered there. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Chris, for taking us through that. So we're now going to move on to our question and answer session. So as I said, there's a little Q&A box. If you want to pop any questions that you've got that you'd like to ask Chris into there now, then we will ask those live for you. Um, we've got a couple that were submitted prior to the session. Um, so I'll just um, run through those now and give everyone else who's attending this evening the, the chance to pop theirs in the Q&A box as well. So. Um, the first question, uh, Chris, we had through was, if I want to take photography, will I need to have my own camera? Um, so ideally you would have your own camera, but we have all the resources here um, if, you, if you needed to borrow a camera. So for example, we've got, I think we've got over 40 digital SLR cameras and also smaller compact cameras that you can loan out, often like an overnight loan or a, a weekend loan. So that isn't a barrier to doing a level um, and also a lot of the time if you can take photographs of your mobile phone and the quality is good then often they they can be better sometimes because they're more portable um, you can get different angles you can and also you can really quickly upload photos from your mobile as well so no not you don't have to have a, a camera to study photography you don't need an expensive camera to study photography you just need the ability to take imagery whether that's your phone or or a camera that you own great thank you um another one we've we've had in on the photography theme um somebody wants to know can they apply for photography even if they don't have much past experience yeah, so I would say that most, in my experience, um, and I'm a moderator for uh, one of the exam boards, a lot of the local schools, they don't offer graphics and photography. They offer maybe just art, and maybe within that they might do some photography, some graphics. So my expectation is that if you wanted to study photography or graphics or, or art, you don't necessarily need to have done those subjects at GCSE. Um, it obviously would help because you've got a bit of an idea about the background of art um, and photography and graphics. If, for example, you're currently studying art and design and you don't really want to do the painting and the drawing style, but you still want to do a creative subject, then I think graphics would be really good for those students that would like to do more traditional art combined with digital. If you're just really interested in kind of taking photographs and you're kind of interested in getting out there and taking images of the world around you, then photography is the route. But you can obviously combine the A-levels. So you could, if you were really wanted to, it'd be hard work, but you could do all three of those A-levels if you wanted to. And it, it doesn't really matter on what experience you've had, it helps, but we're quite inclusive in the art department. So we will always take people's own experiences and their own kind of histories um, as individuals. We won't kind of just say, oh, because you didn't do art at school, you can't do it here at A-level. Yeah, brilliant, thank you. And that, that sort of touches on another question that we had in, um, where, which you just sort of partly answered in saying, can I study all three subjects, which you said you can. This person's question is, are they too similar? Does, does it make sense to study them all or, or can you, and is it a good option? Um, well, there are there is crossover, and there always is going to be in art subjects because you've all got a. I mean, to be a successful art student, you might think, "Oh, I've just got to be good at drawing and painting." You don't have to be good at drawing and painting because you could be a textiles artist, you could be, uh, you could be an illustrator, you could be somebody that does animation. Because everybody's coming in from different starting points and you'd all would have taught at different schools. We do have, that's why we have like in the autumn term, we have what we call like a skills foundation unit whereby we might, we might repeat stuff that you may have done at school, but it'll be done at a slightly higher level and more interesting. And it'll be based on your ideas rather than like, here's a worksheet. This is what it must look like. We kind of say, these are the skills we'd like you to use, but um, you can explore it in your own way. So each individual A-level has its own kind of skills foundation project at the beginning, but they are quite different. And in fact, if you kind of think about it this way, if you did do all three, then how good would you be in all three? Because you're getting all of the skills rather than just like the photography skills and the graphic skills and the art skills. 
if you did all three or two or three, then actually you're getting more skills that can then be translated into both of the A levels. And if, if you are kind of sat there now thinking that you, you know that you want to go to university and do a creative subject, I'm just going to have to move because my lights go off in my classroom. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um, give me a second. Okay. There we go, back on, back in the room. I knew that would happen, I forgot to say it at the beginning. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, um, if, you, if you did all three, it would be hard work, but the other thing is you'd be in the department and the department is really open door. So if you really like art and you know that you wanna to go to university and do a creative subject and, and that's, what you're, that's what you wanna do, I mean, why not do all three? Yeah. I, mean, I think it would be a really good experience. You would have to put up with me quite a lot, but I mean, <laughs> most of my students don't mind. So, so yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Um, question here, and I think it might be the last one in, in case we, get, unless we get any more in. Um, somebody's asked, is the EPQ um, the equivalent to a full A level or, or how does that work? Okay, so the EPQ is the equivalent of an AS level. So essentially, if you did, um, if you did three A levels or maybe you did a full-time BTEC, that would be the equivalent of three A levels. And obviously the AS is kind of half. Um, the EPQ, the only difference between the EPQ as an AS and other ASs is that the EPQ, you can actually achieve an A star, whereas at AS level, you can only go from a, an A to kind of an E. Mm -hmm. So the EPQ is the equivalent of an AS, um, but it does have UCAS points attached to it as well. So, um, and the really good thing about the EPQ, how we, um, how we do it here at the sixth form, is that you study it in year 12, you submit your work around about the summer of the transition between year 12 and 13. It gets marked and sent off in November, and then you get your, um, your result back actually in the January of your year 13. So you actually, before you end your course, you have um, you have a result already there, and you can contact your universities at that point and say, "Hey, I've got a, like an EPQ at this grade. Would you do anything with my entry criteria?" And they some a lot of universities will change their entry criteria if you've got a, an EPQ under your belt. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that brings us to the end of our questions. Um, so yes, applications obviously are now open for next September for 2021. So um, if you're interested in applying, please get your application in as soon as possible. Uh, our website is on screen there and also our um, email address here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk. That's the email address to use if after this session you've got any questions, anything springs to mind that you think, oh, I wish I'd have asked that, send an email there and we'll make sure that it gets passed on to Chris and his team for somebody to come back to you. On our website as well, we've also got link to our virtual tours. So if anybody hasn't yet been able to come into our building and have a look around, we have got our virtual tours on there. So you can have a look around the various floors, look in some of the classrooms and some of the spaces where you'll be relaxing and studying. So it's a really good chance to get a feel for the college. Um, and if hopefully in the new year as well, we will be able to open our doors again and welcome you. If you'd like to come and look around in person, hopefully some of you already have, but um, you can get a head start and have a look at our virtual tours now as well. So thanks again for joining us. Um, thank you to, to Chris for taking us through those subjects and uh, we, we hope to meet you all soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.